This is Peyton Jones with Church Planter Magazine. Not Church Planting Magazine. We hate those guys. We are with Church Planter Magazine, and I have Ben Pilgreen here today with me, a uh, church planner and a part-time sexy man of God because he has a bald head. Freshly shaven this morning. So, nice, absolutely. man. I am not worthy. I did not freshly shave my head. It, it catches a gleam off the uh, camera. I just got some powder, though, so I'm good. Right on, man. Good stuff. We, we do have a makeup guy. His name's Pete. Awesome. Pete. He likes to play around with makeup, and one day he came and he said, I don't know what to do with my gift. And we said, we got a use for it. we got something for you. That's good. So, Ben, tell us about what you've been doing and where. Sure. Uh, we planted Epic Church in the heart of downtown San Francisco, February 2011. Awesome, because that church, eats, that city eats churches alive. That's what we had heard. And so, really, for us, uh, there were initial fears. We, we had three little boys at the time, ages two, four, and six. We knew the city was very different than the suburban Midwest area where we were from, uh, but really believed that God had called us to do it, and so he's protected us from things and, and certainly has done way beyond what we could have done on our own. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So uh, you're here speaking at the conference. What are you talking about? Yeah, doing a couple of workshops, uh, a lot about the, just the launch process, how to launch the church, how to nice. resource the vision, how to select a team, how to select facilities, nice. those okay. kinds of things. So. so give us the skinny, man. Like, break that down. Pretend we're in your workshop. We're on, like, the, you know, one-and-a-half yeah. speed version um, for this video. Yep. Uh, what is a church planner? How does he select his team? How does he launch? How does he do all that stuff? Yeah, I think a lot of those things are connected, even though they seem like different things. The biggest thing a church planner, I think, needs to do is just be ruthlessly self-aware and honest with himself about what gifts God has given him. Obviously, God works beyond our gifts, but what, what gifts has God given me? Has he uh, gifted me to, to be the leader, or just has he called me and gifted me to be a part of the team? So mm. I think deciphering that's a huge one, yeah. and then everything else kind of falls from there. And, and it, it, Because if, if you aren't willing to make the big ask, whether it's for a team or staffing or interns or for money— um, then you're probably not the leader, yeah. but you can definitely have a spot on the bus, perhaps. Um, so to really be distinguishing the clarity. I like that because, you know, there are guys who want a church plant. They never want to discipline people. Yep. They never want to ask for money. Sure. That's all the, you know, preaching, Just hanging out in the pulpit is the fun bit. And exactly. that's what people think of. Yep. But we know, don't we, that, that there's a bunch of stuff. I call it the stupid stuff I hate yep. that I have to do. Sure. Hard decisions. Uh, conflict, uh, being the person from a human element, is where the, this is where the buck stops. Hey Amen. You're the guy that people blame. And, yeah. <laughs> and, and so there's a weight to it that, that uh, it needs to be a gift to it, but also there's this weight that comes with it that no one else can, can understand. Um, and so just to be really crazy clear on, am I that guy? Yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, that's huge. Great, man. So uh, what about like collecting, collecting, gathering a core team? You mentioned that. What, what have you yeah. found in that? Yeah, for us, um, we kind of use the preview service approach. So we would have a preview service once a month leading into the launch. Between preview services, I would try to meet one-on-one -on -one with everyone that came to the first one. Right. We do some kind of fun event like a barbecue, bowling night, whatever get connected with people there and really try to get them to join our launch team. Right. So after five of those and the one-on-ones, we had about 50 adults who would say, hey, we'll help get this thing right. going. So whatever that number is, just to have as many people as possible when that church launches to, to, to say, hey, we're in this. Do you talk to them about attendance and giving? Yes. And say, look, man, you're coming with us. You got to fight with us. Yeah, definitely. Just say, hey, we want to. We don't. There, there's no room in those early days. There shouldn't ever be space in the church for these kind of people. But there's no room. Freeloaders. The, yeah, there's no room in the early <laughs> days for someone to uh, to be there just as an attender. It's, it's, it's purposeless. And so anyone who was on that initial team, whether it was handing out programs or serving in kids or. Uh, parking or whatever they're doing, they, everybody has to have some role, even if it's not their number one fit. Awesome. Yeah. I like that. <clears throat> and that translates into what you said about the city before we got rolling. Um, tell, tell me about what people's attitude towards the city. You're in San Francisco. Yeah. Why do people go to the city? And w how do you feel that you're instrumental in changing how they view the city? Yeah. By and large, the, the, the kind of status quo reason to come to this city is it, it is a fun place to live if you're single uh, and can afford it, and it is a place where it, it will get you down the road career-wise, especially if it's technology or fashion or finance, and so many people come just to consume the city, just, hey, what can I get out of this? Uh, so people will say, when my kids are older or when we start having kids, we will vacate the city because right. 
oh, it's great for me, the single guy, but it's not great for a family. Right. And so a couple ways we're trying to say, one, think about your career and your giftedness. Um, it's not just about the dollar. Make, make as much money as you can, especially if you're going to give to the church, right? Ma- do all that you can. But think, how, how can I uh, use my influence, use my money, use my career, my intellect, whatever, to, to really further the kingdom in the area of influence that God's given me? And then from a family perspective, don't assume you have to go to suburbia just because you have kids. Um, is it easy? Not necessarily. But for us... We have uh, three children uh, between five and ten, and we're learning that um, if we're intentional about it, we can help them thrive in the city yeah. and, and enjoy the great experiences that will get them further down the road than, than, than the area where I grew up, per se. Hey, man, I was raised on Sesame Street, and from what I remember, it looked like every kid lived in the city. Every, remember that watching right. as a kid? Man, you yep. could raise kids in the city. Yep. And it's been Heck amazing yeah. for us. So they have yeah. the symphony. They have all kinds of opportunities. Uh, and then you protect them from things they need to be protected from, but you... It, it, it's requiring us as parents to be much more intentional. Right. So we're seeing families in our church now that had planned to move out are, are staying, which is really, the, uh, it doesn't show up on paper, but it's a sign of success for us that they would say, you know what, we're not going to a place where we can get a bigger house. We're, we're going to be a part of this church and be a part of the life flow of the, of the city. Awesome. So That is cool. So what is the number one quality you look for in a church planner? I think the number one quality is... Uh, I would give two, but I guess if it give two, I, I, yeah. I, I think I think it, it, can they lead and can they teach? Not do they enjoy those things, but can they do those things? Um, have they been able to lead in anything else? And I don't think they've had to uh, plan at a church before. That would be a catch twenty two, or even necessarily been a pastor. But if they had a business, did it grow at all? Did did was there fruit that came from it? If they yeah. led in youth ministry, um, are there did the, did did the thing go in the positive direction? Um, and again, at the end of the day, it's, it's a risk nonetheless, but, but we, can, we can eliminate certain things. Now, there's a guy that, I don't know if you've heard of Michael Cheshire. No. Uh, he's written incredible books like uh, How to Knock Over a 7-Eleven and Other Ministry Training. Awesome. Highly recommended. I to see that. But uh, he, he writes in there that if you're a church planner and you don't have the gift of teaching, forget about it. Mm-hmm. Just not. So you mentioned teaching is the mm-hmm. second thing. Um, why and 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 what? Well, first off, why talk about that a yeah, bit? Yeah, I I think I, I I think it can be more than that. And and here's what I think too: um, if you can't do it, the next person beside you needs to be able to do it. Okay. I think someone needs to be able to do it if that's right. what it is. And so we can call it teaching training. I don't simply mean preaching. Yeah. Uh, to a crowd or anything like that, but to be able to, because if you if, when it comes down to communication, um, both the gift of preaching and other things. You're, if, to raise money, you've got to communicate. Yeah. To let people know you're the new thing in town. Hey, there's a new church here. You've got to communicate. Yeah. To cast a vision to volunteers, whatever. So there has to be, even if it's not, I don't know, maybe it's the broader idea of communicating. You, you have to be able to clearly articulate yeah. what it is you're wanting people to know and what it is you're wanting them to do. So, like, hey, But preaching is really important. I mean, for huge. a church planner, that's, that's going to be a big huge. gift. that He's going to need to have that in his arsenal. Right. So how, do you, how can you tell when a guy's good enough to preach? That's a great question. That's a great question. Outside of, uh, and, and even if he can preach where he's at, especially if he's moving cross-culturally, can he, uh, can he do it in a new context? Right. And so... Because, uh, I mean, if I went to San Francisco, sure. San Francisco is going to be completely different than Midwestern America or even rural South. <laughs> yep. So... It, it very much so. It has to change in the context. Yep. Or Southern California. Yeah, no we're, doubt. we're here in, uh, you know, Rick Warren's uh, church. Sure. And um, he, he's able to communicate to yuppies. Yep. And I always think of, like, Phil uh, over on uh, Duck Dynasty, right? right? He'd be like, a uh, yuppie Christian, yep. right? I mean, this is yuppie land, yeah. right? But San Francisco, that's a whole different animal. Yeah, and, and even for me personally, it was an intimidating thing to really think about, hey, can can I you know with God's help like, can I do this? Yeah. Um, for I went to a, a small state school in Louisiana. Eight out of ten people in my church went to uh, Ivy League school or Stanford. Just the mm, reality. Right. And so it, I I think a couple of things. You, it's it's still us being ourselves, but it's contextualizing it. Hey, can I have conversations about what the stock market's doing? About you know, I, but but what's interesting? I, I don't have to know everything that they know, like technology wise. No, no. I I I can open my computer. 
I can get email. I can do a few other things, right? Yeah. I can get on Twitter. Uh, but these guys are shaping a whole culture. Uh, absolutely. And so, uh, so what they what they're not look. I think it's remembering they're not looking to me for business advice or advice on how to create the next new app, but they are looking to me for the spiritual thing. And so. Go, lean into your sweet spot with that. In communication, you know, gauging your communication for your audience is is something that God did all throughout the Bible. No doubt. Um, coming as Jesus calls himself the Word. The sure. Word becomes flesh. It's God In communicating sure. his heart himself uh, through the medium of a, of a human being. Right. Um, and then Paul, right? Like Paul's a Jewish Pharisee, and we see the gospel modeled in Paul recontextualizing uh, the Old Testament. Um the life of Jesus yep. for a Gentile world. So I, I think you're on to something pretty hot there. Yeah, it's huge, and, and it's, a, it's a work in progress. I think yeah. sometimes it is, hey, not only can you teach or lead, but can you adapt? I'm not asking you to change you. You've got to be the truest you there is, but can you be the San Francisco version, the best version yeah. of you Yeah. Uh, w- without, um, w- without losing authenticity and, and those kind of things? Excellent. So. Hey, Ben, it's been awesome having you, Thanks man. So much. Thanks for coming. How can people uh, get in touch with you, learn more about you? Sure. Uh, Twitter is just Ben Pilgreen. Uh, not a common name, so got that one. And then uh, email wise uh, at, at Epic, Ben at EpicSF.com. Okay. So that'd be great. Ben, thanks for coming on. Thanks Good so much, luck babe. to your work in San Francisco. Godspeed. Right.